So today I'm going to present to you my honors project that I completed this year. Um, so in order to test for the utility of DNA barcoding, I, we chose the insect order Hamoptera, which is also known as true bugs. So the focus of the study was set upon uh, urban areas, urban areas because of urbanization, which poses as a threat to biodiversity. So the endangered, biodiversity uh, like gets a negative impact due to urbanization, which causes the endangerment of species. And this is through habitat loss and the alteration of various ecological processes and functions. So it's therefore very important to create an inventory of Hermoptera to allow for proper conservation of the different areas within the Itaguini region, uh, within the region. So uh, as my supervisor spoke about before, this project is based, the urban area is the Itaguini region and surrounding areas. So why did we choose Hermoptera? Hermoptera have economical and ecological importances. In the ecological importances, it serves as a biological control. So it is therefore important to carry out species level identification to allow for conservation. So evaluating the diversity of Hermoptera across the different nature reserves within and around the Itaguini is therefore very important to allow for conservation of these different areas with, uh, within this uh, urban area to be conserved correctly. Uh, there are, so why use DNA barcoding? This is because there are, very, there are many challenges during the identification of Hermoptera using traditional taxonomy. So we know that we, we don't agree that uh, traditional taxonomy is not better than uh, DNA barcoding. It's a complementary tool to DNA barcoding. But the problem comes in with cryptic species and the different developmental stages, which I'm going to uh, speak about later on. So what is DNA barcoding? First, let me tell you what the traditional approach requires. So specimens are uh, first uh, collected. They are, uh, they are compared across literature. So they have to look at literature and the specimens and try and give species names to the specimens collected. Once this is done, they were, you are then able to search for the name into a biodiversity database. This is time consuming and expert taxonomists are required, which is also very expensive. Uh, cryptic species are also a problem, as I mentioned, and I, as I said before, it is also a complement to DNA barcoding. So, for DNA barcoding, DNA barcoding is a relatively new system which provides a rapid, accurate, and automatable species identification. It allows taxonomists to accelerate the time in which they identify species. So, the barcode, uh, DNA barcode used for Hermoptera is a CO1. So, Firstly, specimens are collected, the DNA is extracted, and the DNA is, sent for, uh, is amplified and sent for sequencing. Once the sequences are retrieved, they can be searched by as a DNA barcode against uh, a reference library. So it's an automatable method. So it basically converts the DNA barcode into a species name. However, a good reference library is needed. And for us, the biodiversity database used is BOLD, which means it is the barcode of life data systems, I'm going to refer to it as BOLD. So once you get the species names, all the information about the species is present in this database. So in order to test for the efficiency of the DNA barcode, as my uh, lab member discussed before as a DNA barcoding gap, it is the efficient, efficient way of testing whether it's successful in the taxon of choice. So what is the barcoding gap? Firstly, the red part here is the intraspecific genetic variation within species. The red, the yellow, well, it doesn't look yellow here, but it's the interspecific uh, genetic variation among the species. So as you can see in A, you can see a clear barcoding gap between these two genetic distances, and in B, the overlap. So the barcoding gap here represents that uh, DNA barcoding will be successful in the taxon of choice, and the overlap shows that it might not be a success of a taxon of choice. Might not be, I will describe that just now. So the aims of my honors project was to first add to and analyze a preliminary reference library for the Hermoptera collected in the Itaguini region. The second aim was to assess the utility of DNA barcode in Hermoptera by looking as uh, looking whether or not the CO1 marker, as you all guys are speaking about, whether it is in fact successful and useful for DNA barcode in Hermoptera. This is further analysis was done on the barcoding gap. 
to try and see whether the utility of DNA barcoding was successful or not. So the objectives of the study, firstly, specimens in the present study were available. So there were a total of 964 barcode compliant uh, specimens which were available for the Itegrini Hemoptera project. It was available on board. 23 successful DNA extraction, CO1 amplifications and sequencing were completed in my present study and added to this 964, allowing for 987 DNA sequences to be allowed to be analyzed for my study. So these sequences were collected among 17 different, loca different localities within and around the Itegwini region. So as you can see, the green area uh, is the Itegwini municipality region, and this uh, gray area here shows the regions around the Itegwini region. So secondly, I looked at the morphology. So pictures were available, photographs were available for all the data that was given to me and that I added on. So the morphology of the specimens were analyzed at a, morpho a morphological uh, manner. However, this is what's done by me. I am not an uh, uh, expert taxonomist, so I'm more of an um, immature person <laughs> to do this. But I compared this to the barcode clusters that were available on BOLD that I explained before to see whether there was a correlation between the genetic, genetics and uh, morphology. Thirdly, uh, phylogenetic analysis was done with, to see whether the CO1 marker was uh, efficient enough for hemiptera, and the barcode analysis was done was carried out on spider. So this is my CO1. We found that there were three, 38 families present in my whole uh, data set, with a total of 181 genera and 216 species. So it shows that the CO1, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, but it showed that the CO1 marker was in fact successful when trying to differentiate among the families uh, rather than below the species level. So I'm going to get to this now. This here, it shows the distribution of the specimens depicted in uh, blue. It shows the number of morpho species depicted in red, while well, in this case not so red, and uh, the number of barcode clusters depicted in a green. This was looked at across all the different sampling regions that were set aside for the Itegwini region and surrounding areas. Um, it can be seen that EPT, Springside, and Palmet were sampled extensively as compared to Burning Crook, Hazelwood Dam, and High Meadows. And I plan on sampling these lower regions more extensively in uh, my master's project. So let's, you can see that there is the number of morpho species and the number of barcode clusters are uh, like comparatively similar. But if you look here in Springside, the barco, number of barcode clusters exceeds the number of uh, mo uh, morpho species. I spoke about cryptic speciation before. This could have been due to cryptic species. Then we have a look at the UKZN area. The number of morpho species exceeded the number of barcode DNA clusters. This could have been due to uh, developmental stages, and now I will get to that. So as you can see here, me, as a, not a taxonomist, I sorted out the pictures, and I separated these two into different morpho species. In fact, they were the exact same, they belonged to the same species, but due to DNA barcoding, it showed us that it belonged to the same species. And this here is the immature uh, state of this Palomera prasina, and this is the adult stage of it. So DNA barcode, in fact, helped us to show that these belong together. But I'm sure that expert taxonomists would be able to look at the differences and tell. So the barcode gap analysis. So in order to see whether the DNA barcoding worked for my specimen, I told you we checked for the barcode gap. So the full data set of 987 samples were ran through the system and to, to depict whether it was successful. So genetic uh, distances can be biased below the species diversity. However, it was thought that the singletons of the data set might have caused a problem and caused the overlapping of this uh, data set. Singletons are one individual representative for family or species. So the data analysis was carried out uh, without the, with the singletons were removed from the data set and the analysis was, was carried out again. But as you can see here, there is still an overlap. So this analysis needs to be carried out in, uh, with caution. It cannot just be assumed that DNA barcoding does not work for hemiptera. As I said, this is my honors project, and I plan on 
investigating this further whether or not it's true because you just can't uh, like assume whether it works or not. So as you can see, further analysis, there are possible reasons as to uh, why the barcoding gap <coughs> is not present and there is an overlap. First is a misidentification and or misclassification of homoptera, cryptic species, and the phylogeographic structure, which occurs below the species level. I say you need to work with this with caution because previous studies done by these uh, people sh have carried out on homoptera from all around the world and have shown that DNA barcode is in fact successful for this taxon of choice. It is clear that further in investigation for the usefulness of this DNA barcoding needs to be carried out in order to see whether it is <coughs> successful for homoptera. Uh, firstly, I'd like to thank the barcoding interns and fellow uh, postgrads on my lab and my supervisor. Uh, the following uh, foundations for their funding. As you can see, my project also forms part of the larger project of the Ite Greeny Municipality, which you can uh, read about more. Thank you.